The offer was a little surprising, but it, it was a pretty good price if you're getting. I'm Rebecca Kern, tech policy reporter at Politico, and we're going to be talking about Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter. He has espoused and shared a good deal of misinformation, particularly around the COVID vaccine and treatments. He carries a lot of power when he tweets things like that to 80 plus million followers. Currently in place are COVID misinformation policies and guidelines. If you cross them, you're either labeled or your tweets are removed, or eventually if you kind of multiple strikes against the policies, you're kicked off. So that's a question where if Musk is in control, would there be no moderation on misinformation related to COVID, for example? All Musk has said is we will follow the U.S. law. It's not technically against the law to spread misinformation. Certain speech is not acceptable, such as hate speech or anti-Semitic speech or racist speech but it's not maybe technically illegal. The, the human end of it is, do we foresee content moderators wanting to stay and work for a Musk who's espoused a vision of free speech absolutism? He has said he doesn't believe in permanent bans. And if you take that one step further, it could allow former President Donald Trump back on the platform. Will that inciting violence policy stay in place? We've seen a pretty bifurcated reaction between Republicans and Democrats. You see them go back to their camps. It's Republicans talking free speech and it's Democrats saying billionaires have way too much power and we need to rein them in. We need to tax them more, but I don't exactly know how they're gonna regulate a must. One thing that I've talked to some political strategists about whether a Musk ownership will um, lift the current ban on political advertisements, which was put in place in 2019. If you go as far as saying all free speech is allowed, that could mean political advertisement. It's gonna be difficult for Congress to pass anything really limiting how speech is shared on the platform. It's almost like he thinks he's too powerful or knows better than all these federal regulators. And since he owns so many companies, currently the CEO of Tesla, he likes kind of taking it as far as he can. And he did end up crossing a line. He tweeted um, on 420 that he was gonna sell Tesla shares and make it private, sell them for $420. That got him in trouble with the SEC. He was fined. The thing with Twitter is it's not really regulated by any federal agency. It's been in Twitter's public interest as a publicly traded company to make it a user-friendly website. But once again, he's going to take it private and there's less of a in public incentive and less federal oversight. The deal is going to take about six months to close and I don't foresee major changes right now. We saw Donald Trump tell Fox News yesterday he doesn't plan to get back on the platform. He has his own social media platform called True Social, but we've heard from advisors that that may not be true. He may go back to Twitter if he's allowed on. In the end, if a Twitter becomes so toxic that no individuals want to be associated with it, particularly politicians who want a clean image and um, not be associated with a platform full of harassment and hate speech, it's just not a great business model.